In this video, I show you how to overcome ugly prejudice against you. some good news for you. Today, I want to talk about a way that you can overcome the ugly prejudice that we see from others. I've talked about achievement and success for many years, now written about it, and as a professional speaker, I get out and talk about how you can achieve what you need using the right tools, a lot of cool technology, and being able to have the right mindset which is the most important. And matter of fact, I named my company Achievement Systems, which I think uh, is really important. You have the right systems around you, you can do it. Now, prejudice is something that exists. It's ugly, and we've seen it in many different ways. I remember my parents experiencing it as they uh, moved to Michigan from Arkansas, and when they were there, they always would feel like people were looking down on them, and often because of the way they spoke. They were just speaking the way they naturally grew up. They weren't very sophisticated people, never became really wealthy, but they meant well. They worked hard. I remember once my mom was speaking for our church, and she was speaking about something she felt was very important, and then the people started giggling and laughing at her because they looked at having a southern accent as something that was beneath what they felt. Mom didn't understand what was going on. She was just talking the way that she did. But we see that. Now, many people experience prejudice in many other ways. People because of their skin color, because of their sexual orientation, because of their height, because of their weight, because of where they're from or whatever it is, ugly prejudice happens. We see it all the time. And, you know, many good meaning, well-meaning people will try to do something like pass laws against this. You can't do that. You can't do that. Passing a law by some bureaucrat in some place far, far remote from the people is not going to change the attitude of some bigoted jerk that still thinks that certain people aren't right because of whatever. And it's one of those things that we go through in life, and they're going to try to put you down. You probably know what I'm talking about. People putting you down for whatever reason it is, your background, your religion, your sex, whatever. All these things are there. But the good news is that you can change that. You can. There's a way to do it. And it hit me just right upside the head a couple of days ago when I was reading a quote from uh, David Oyelowo. David Oyelowo is an actor that played uh, Martin Luther King in the movie Selma. And he has delighted audiences in many other of his works. He's just a brilliant actor. Now, he was born in Ghana, raised in the UK as a British citizen and living in Ghana. He knew about uh, the prejudice that was uh, all around. He now has moved to the United States and has become a United States citizen. And he talked about how you can overcome prejudice. And I think his quote was so good when he said, get this, the best weapon against prejudice is excellence. That means you become so good at something, you become excellent that they can't put you aside. They have to acknowledge, hey, he might be a fill in the blank, whatever derogatory term they're going to use, but they do acknowledge that you are exceptionally good at that. You know, it's kind of like what Steve Martin said, and it became the title of a book by Cal Newport, the phrase, so good, they can't ignore you. And that is the key. See, if you can be so good at something that you are the go-to person, even if they don't like you, they're going to buy your product because it is the best or your service is legendary in what it does. I think of, uh, Gina and I just finished watching the series Breaking Bad and the character Walter White, who is the uh, protagonist in the movie, and he became very good at a certain skill, actually making crack meth, <laughs> crystal meth. And in that environment, in the underworld there that where he dealt, he did such a good job because of his skills as a chemist and he worked and learned this stuff that he then became, earned their respect and they even kept him alive because they needed him, not because they thought he was nice or he had a good haircut. Uh, he had a haircut kind of like mine in most of the movie, most of the series there. But it was because of what he could do for them. And you see, that's the key. You want to find out what you can do for them and be willing to pay the price. When you can do that, you'll get ahead. I think of what Randy Posh did. He was a professor at Carnegie Mellon University, and he had been diagnosed with incurable cancer but kept going strong. As a matter of fact, I want to show you a video of Randy Posh speaking and demonstrating his physical ability, even though he's been diagnosed with cancer. All right. 
Uh, so that is what it is. We can't change it. And we just have to decide how we're going to respond to that. We cannot change the cards we are dealt, just how we play the hand. Uh, if I don't seem as depressed or morose as I should be, um, sorry to disappoint you. Uh, uh, and I assure you, I am not in denial. It's not like I'm not aware of what's going on. My family, my three kids, my wife, we just decamped. We bought a lovely house in Chesapeake, Virginia, near Norfolk. And we're doing that because that's a better place for the family to be down the road. Uh, and the other thing is I am in phenomenally good health right now. I mean, it's the greatest thing of cognitive dissonance you will ever see is the fact that I am in really good shape. In fact, I'm in better shape than most of you. <laughs> so anybody who wants to cry or pity me can come down and do a few of those, and then you may pity me. Amazing. What he did was to overcome that by really working hard and getting good. He attained, achieved professorship, getting tenure way before most people do at an early age. And people would say, wow, how did you do this? Randy, what did you do to get that tenure so young? That's great. And he said, you want to find out what it takes? Call me in my office at 10 o'clock on a Friday night and I'll talk with you about it. He's willing to pay the price. And that is the key to get ahead. You become so good. You become excellent, as David Oyelowo told us. You become excellent, and that has a way of pushing aside all that prejudice. People can do that. Another person that I admire greatly that did this is Curtis Jackson, known as 50 Cent. His book called The 50th Law that he co-wrote with Robert Greene is exceptional. Write that down. You got to get that book. 50th Law, and it is just brilliant. I've read it several times and continue to go back over and over each chapter. Very, very good. And he overcame literally being shot nine times, and they left him for dead. But he came back and figured out what to do and how to overcome it. Yeah, you talk about a rough lifestyle. His was quite different than mine. Growing up in Queens, he grew up in the inner city there, the gangs and the drug-related wars that were going on. Quite different than what I had. He had ugly prejudice there, but he overcame it by getting really, really good, exceptionally good at what he did. And so you see, that's the key. That's how you can get ahead. That's how you can do what you need to do. Just a little while ago, I had the real distinct honor of introducing former heavyweight champion George Foreman at Freedom Fest. It was a gathering. We had about 2,100 people there registered and 50,000 viewing us live stream. I got a chance to introduce him, had a wonderful time. And I remember during his speech... He said something really profound. He said, I, I learned a while back that if you learn how to sell, you'll never starve. And I thought, you know, that's the key. Learning how to provide something that others want through persuasion, not through coercion like the politicians like to do it. Because when you think about it, every law they pass is coercive. It is coercive in that to enforce that law, someone must be willing to kill another person if they don't obey that law. Think about it. And so the key is being able to persuade with co not coercion, but persuasion and showing them the be benefits to them. That means you got to study, you got to learn, and you got to do what the market says that they want. Not just what you think is nifty and groovy. You might be really good at Tsetse flies in Ethiopia in the 15th century. <laughs> Real good, Sparky, but nobody's going to be paying for that. The marketplace doesn't have a big demand for that. Find out what people really want and what they need. Then you study and learn that. Today, you can do it better than ever through YouTube, through the blogs that are out there, through using Skype and Zoom and tools like that and hiring. That's right, hiring. Put your coins into helping someone else pay them for the knowledge they have and talk to them for an hour, for two hours. Get them as a coach, somebody that knows a particular area that you want to know. That's how you do it. So you see, the key is you can overcome terrible, ugly prejudice by mastering the skills that the market is ready, willing, and able to pay for. And then you will overcome it. I want to hear from you. Please leave a comment below on social media. Let's get this word out. It's really important. This message is vitally important to our world. And I really appreciate it when you share it with your community, tweet it, send it out on Facebook, and let others know about this. I will look forward to hearing from you. I'm Terry Brock. You can reach me at terry at terrybrock.com for email, and I will look forward to hearing from you. Have a wonderful day.